Good evening and thank you for joining us. I hope you're all safe. You're all well. This is the Current Bike Dialogues and uh, it is yet another special episode with a stellar lineup of guests as we take the discussion forward on what is happening with India's automobile sector. We started this season of Current Bike Dialogues with uh, the Current Bike Survey that talked about just what we can expect in terms of consumer behavior going forward. Today we uh, sort of capped that off with a more comprehensive look at how things now stand after the initial uh, sort of feedback that we got from the market. And uh, to speak about that, uh, I have, like I said, a uh, whole lot of guests, uh, guests who are going to add a lot of value and insight, no doubt. So to quickly tell you who we have on the show today, Nimisha Jain is uh, from the Boston Consulting Group in uh, India. Uh, Prasenjit Datta Barua is uh, with Facebook and, uh, of course, a familiar face to us here at Car and Bike. And also a very familiar face is Tarun Garg, who is uh, Director of Sales and Marketing at Hyundai Motor India. Uh, good evening and thank you all for joining us. It's so wonderful to have you. And uh, of course, the reason why we have Facebook and uh, BCG is uh, that there is a special study or report uh, that the two of them have put out and we'd be sharing some of that with you. And indeed, we'll hear from both of them. So in fact, Nimisha, let me come straight to you first, uh, not just because ladies first, but because I would really like to know from you uh, more about this, uh, the report, because, you know, the uh, ongoing situation, yes, we've talked about it for some time now, and we've said it's unprecedented, it's one nobody could see coming, so there was no preparation for it. But now with, uh, you know, getting into five months in almost, uh, what are you picking up and how different is it in terms of what people are thinking over a similar sort of uh, situation maybe last year? Yeah. No, thank you. Um, and thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, you're right. This is a time like never before, completely unprecedented and nothing we could ever have imagined. Um, over the course of the last four and a half months, we've been tracking consumer sentiment very closely. Um, and together with uh, Facebook, we've actually done a lot of research to understand what consumers are thinking. Uh, consumers are worried. They are deeply concerned about the health risk. And that's translating into very, very careful behavior in terms of uh, uh, looking after their health and hygiene um, and focusing on really impure, uh, protecting themselves at a time like this. At the same time, they're also very worried about their income. Uh, and over 50% of consumers we spoke to believe that they would have a lower income this year than before, uh, as an outcome of which they are cutting back on discretionary spend. Um, if you pull all of this together, what does that mean for the auto sector? Um, I think three points I'd like to make. One, we are going to see a softening of demand with consumers slowing down discretionary purchases, either yes. cancelling, postponing, or even the consumers who do buy looking to trade down uh, and spend a little less than they normally would have on their car purchases. At the same time, we are seeing wide variations by type of consumer. So there are certain segments, um, you know, the, the 26 to 40-year-olds in metros, more affluent who are not cutting back as much uh, and are, are going to buy cars even uh, at this time. Uh, yes. And then the third that we're seeing is that the way people want to buy cars is changing dramatically. So when they do purchase an automobile, they want it to be almost entirely contactless. Uh, it, auto was always a sector that was highly digitally influenced. But at this point, over 85% of people are deciding what to buy online. Uh, over 70% have decided what to buy even before connecting with the dealership. And they would like their entire purchase process, including all the elements of what they do with the dealership, to be as contactless as possible. All right. Uh, so that, that sets this up really well. Uh, thank you, Nimesha, for that. Uh, uh, PD, uh, Prasenjit, to you next. Uh, you know, this point about uh, how what Nimesha said, too, about how, of course, digital plays a huge role. Uh, now, that's something that we have, of course, consistently talked about. It's been about four or five years where we've seen a massive shift. Uh, you and I have, in fact, specifically uh, also uh, done a whole lot of uh, programming around that same very fact. But now, uh, you know, let's highlight the portion that uh, Nimisha mentioned, which is uh, this whole contactless experience. 
there's one thing to be said about, you know, the sanitizing or the safety aspect, but then there's the other about also the payment aspect. How much of that do you see happening? People actually making big ticket purchases like cars more and more frequently online completely. Yeah, PD, if Thanks, you can Sid. hear me. I just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Thanks, it. It's always a pleasure to be back on your show. And uh, let me just quickly take a step back before I get into the payment piece. But I think uh, just uh, and to give you context on the report that Nimesh has spoke about, I think the current pandemic has obviously made a huge change in the way the purchase decisions are made and down the funnel. I think to examine that, it's where we and BCG came together, Facebook and BCG came together to put this report to understand what has changed. And uh, here's the interesting part, Sid. So uh, what we discovered was, and like you rightly said, digital influence is always very, very strong on the auto sector. Uh, 85 to 91 percent people have actually said that they've always consulted on digital before they went and made that decision. Uh, but the good part, the interesting part here was 70 percent of the people who were interviewed actually went and said that they uh, have already already uh, decided which car to buy before they go into the showroom. And this is up 20 percent from what it was earlier. Uh, so I think putting these two facts together, Sid, uh, I see a strong digital shift uh, therefore happening even more now. And the way I see this, uh, it is uh, it is the pivot. Uh, it hopefully is the yes. pivot that the auto industry has been waiting for. Uh, and this industry has seen hard times in the last two years. And I have also, uh, tremendous respect for all the people uh, who are in this industry. They've been really hardy there, holding on there. So I think this is a great opportunity to pivot. And we'll hear obviously more stories from Tarun when we talk to him next. Uh, going back to your point on the payment piece, I think what's happening is uh, we are seeing a lot of digital being used in pre-purchase, purchase, and post-purchase. Pre-purchase, obviously, is the most important part where they are talking to friends, family, checking it out. Uh, they're smart uh, auto OEMs like Hyundai, Maruti, Honda, a bunch of them who are creating car configurators. Uh, uh, Tarun will talk about the great model that they have uh, on click to buy So there's a lot of good work happening to literally warm the uh, buyer up before he or she makes that decision. And uh, it's almost mimicking uh, what was happening on the shop floor earlier. Uh, where is it goes to payments, 100% payment? I think that's still a bit of a distance away. Uh, but what we are certainly seeing OEMs do, Sid, is two things. One is online bookings. So uh, yeah. a reasonable amount of money is being taken for bookings. That's on the rise. And we just heard about the Hyundai numbers on Creta, 55,000. Bookings, a lot of online bookings happening there. And the other thing I'm seeing is the EMI uh, on the finance schemes, yeah, which you normally have to go meet three different people. Uh, we have a lot of OEMs trying to digitize that completely and take it online to people. So enabling them online, uh, maybe not full payment, uh, full cash down there, but either through EMIs or through booking are two trends that I'm seeing there. Sid? All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, Tarun, on to you next. Uh, you know, Last few months, we have had luckily the chance to have you on the show very regularly. And so as a result, I can actually sort of track the uh, sort of changes with you, which is great. Uh, in terms of that perspective, what you just heard from PD, you know, that's got to be reassuring that compared to uh, previous sort of uh, feedback and, and numbers from the market, it's up to 70 percent now of people who are pretty sure of what they're buying before they even hit the showroom. And that's up 20 percent, says PD. Uh, that kind of just helps you to feel more reassured, like I said, about all these digital initiatives that you are taking, that you're having to take. Yes, Sid, uh, I think uh, very well uh, uh, said by PD. And I'll give a very interesting data point, which will also complement what PD said. You know, uh, the inquiry to retail time, you know, I was just trying to track it. In calendar year 20, uh, in calendar year 19, the inquiry to retail time was about 20 days. Now, would you believe this time has now come down to nine days in, in this year? Wow. Now, you can clearly see that uh, customer is much more pre-decided about the purchase. And the second part of it is we as OEMs have also realized that the customer wants the car and he wants it very fast uh, because, you know, it is pandemic time. He wants a personal mobility. So now it is up to us to make sure that that decision is made very fast. The financing is arranged. Of course, we have a click to buy, which really facilitates the end-to-end -end car buying. But uh, but yes, you're right. 
uh, I think this is a trigger which probably all of us were waiting for. And this really brings in a lot of efficiencies in the whole uh, scheme of things. All right. Uh, quickly then, I want to also hear from you on the whole online buying piece or booking at least. Uh, yes, we've heard terrific numbers from uh, from you on, on cars like the Creta. Uh, that's also the Creta factor. So overall, though, since you introduced this, and, and I know you introduced it even before the pandemic started, but let's talk from the pandemic onwards. You know, once lockdowns lifted, what sort of a, a, a growth are you seeing in online interest when it comes to actual bookings? Tarun. Look, uh, uh, yeah, 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 Siddharth. So basically what has happened is, you know, if we see the last couple of years, actually the digital inquiries were on the rise. And uh, but uh, I was seeing I was seeing the last year data. So digital used to contribute about 12 percent to our total inquiries. But since yeah. we launched the click to buy and, you know, and it is one platform where, you know, earlier it was only about an inquiry or a booking. But here the customer gets, a, you know, he can he can actually come on the platform. And, and, and you know, what has happened? Three million customers have already visited the platform. And uh, then he can choose the exteriors of the car, interiors of the car. Okay. He can choose a sales consultant. He can make the uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, he can make the get the financing done. He can get the financing done, and uh, uh, and of course he can offer a delivery at home as well. And what we are seeing is now almost twenty five percent of our inquiries is, are online. You know, from so, so from a level of ten to twelve percent last year, straight away it has moved to twenty five percent. That That's is one, which means yeah. it's a huge a huge asset to our dealers because. Uh, you know, we are really wanting to bring in more efficiency. So this is an entire sure. new world which has opened up. And the uh, the other part of it is, Siddharth, the other part of it is that uh, that it has really brought in the rural and uh, the urban, uh, you know, the divide that's has really gone, uh, gone away. In fact, yeah. that, that's exactly the point I wanted to get at. In fact, Nimisha, if you have any insights on that, you know, I mean, in the past, we would have had a very tier one conversation when it came to all of this. No longer the case, uh, given the uh, overall penetration of uh, smartphones and Internet uh, as well across the country. Would you say that that reflects that in your report as well? Absolutely. And let me divide this into two parts. I think the one thing I would say is just building on what Tarun said, that um, customers today are looking for an end-to-end -end purchase journey online. Uh, the combination of them having greater comfort on digital, them having actually invested in upgrading their connectivity because of the need for online schooling and online work, um, and the fact that they are really worried about the health risk of the pandemic, both in terms of the actual purchase journey and the need for personal mobility. Um, today, they want this end-to-end -end journey, and they're completely comfortable with that. Uh, in fact, what is really interesting is when you talk to consumers who've been through uh, a digital journey, they actually are positively surprised by how good it was. And many of them have said that, in fact, in the future as well, even if once the pandemic is over, they want to continue with this because it's so much more convenient um, and actually so much more customized than what they had expected. Um, so this right. is creating not just, you know, um, a solution as of today, but actually creating an opportunity in this adversity that can create a new, much more personalized and much more efficient opportunity uh, for auto players in the longer term. Uh, the second oh, point, uh, the second point to what you said was: Is this a met affluent metro male phenomenon? Absolutely not. Today, smartphones are in the hands of over 400 million people, um, and the reality is that as auto sales happen across the country, across smaller towns, this need for a contactless experience and the openness to that actually cuts across city tiers and cuts across income segments. Absolutely, so very and in fact, uh, and very democratic. Which is which is what makes it really fascinating, and perhaps uh, of all the more interest to the automobile industry. You've led us to absolutely the point I want to take this discussion forward to, but we have to take a short break. Please stay with us. We come back with more. <laughs> I think some <laughs> some of these things will really stick to it because I now know yeah. that I have a very efficient way of really reaching out to such a vast audience at a very optimum optimum cost and in a much uh, you know beautiful way. So I believe uh, right. Nimisha is right. I think we will all learn from this and come out much stronger. And it will be very very beneficial to really reach to the customer customers as well because it is really leading to customer convenience.
Oh, absolutely. It's uh, a win-win in that sense, for sure. And maybe it took this sort of a situation to teach us those lessons. Uh, we, of course, can't wait for it to all evaporate very quickly and come back to normal. PD, the uh, point about, uh, you know, more compact vehicles, people holding on to their money, none of that is surprising. Uh, obviously, that does hurt the industry in the short term, maybe even the midterm. Uh, how worried are you about, uh, you know, what that makes uh, the industry turn into? Because like you said, we've already come through two or maybe two and a half years of hardship already. Um, how worried are you in terms of the industry spending patterns? You know, actually, Sid, uh, and I'll, I'll just take up from where Tarun left. Yeah, so I think uh, the pandemic, though unfortunate, I think is a great opportunity and a great catalyst for the industry. And you just heard uh, one of the leading OEMs actually signing up for that. It's it's as clear yeah. as that. I think uh, from my perspective, Sid, it'll only drive higher efficiencies and effectiveness in the entire process of marketing and going to business. Uh, what that does, Sid, is from our perspective, we see a deeper engagement. And we've been doing this and we've worked uh, very closely with Tarun and his team on a full value chain analysis where we've actually worked through the value chain and uh, uh, found out opportunities where we can add digital. And that's not only, not only marketing, but right from uh, the awareness to the messaging at the end, which is the uh, talking to the sales representative Tarun spoke about, yeah, using WhatsApp. So we've actually looked at the entire journey. So I think right. uh, now with the pandemic, the OEMs are more open to look at this, and they've actually explored this and seen the benefit. What we are doing at Facebook, said is to ensure that this stays as part of the new normal, is we're ensuring yeah. we're measuring ROI on every activity that we're doing and sharing that with our partners because that's what finally matters on how they sell the car, at what car price they sell their car. So we're making the strong metrics and measurement there to ensure that when we walk out of this, uh, and hopefully soon, these are actually established practices that OEMs start using on a regular basis, far more uh, than what they did uh, previously right. before COVID. Uh, to, to that point, PD, I just want to expand on that. I mean, clearly, like you mentioned, you work with other OEMs, not just Hyundai, and you know they have been working with you for some time. But in terms of just that acceleration towards, you know, I'm not saying anybody was really a naysayer. I think digital was established uh, quite firmly before the pandemic. But would you find that now some of those things have gotten accelerated? At least there are more people now maybe working on more such things with you from the automobile community? Oh, completely. And uh, uh, we heard one example briefly right now. We have, uh, so we've launched something called a virtual launch toolkit, which basically mm -hmm. lets you literally launch a car virtually. So you have AR filters where you can literally touch and feel the car, walk into the car. You have virtual test drives yeah. that we are currently in the process of launching with an OEM. You have car configurators that Tarun spoke about already there on the Click to Buy website and being used as advertising units. So I think the, getting the entire experience, the outside inside uh, onto the guy's uh, phone is where we are seeing that happen. So that's one. And I think fundamentally the shift has moved from digital being an innovation and a good to have to I think a need to have. And that's where right. I see the fundamental shift. And those conversations that we are having over the last three months during the pandemic have been extremely fulfilling. And we've been uh, busier than uh, what I'd expected, for sure, in a good way. <laughs> and yeah. uh, having some really good conversations with uh, people like Tarun and, others, and, uh, and other senior leaders in the auto industry. So, so I'm quite hopeful about this moving on. And uh, I think it's a dip that may have been required. And it's actually going to take us only up now. Well, yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's the, it's the sort of rationalization we needed uh, in some ways. Uh, though, of course, like you said, perhaps the unfortunate way to get there. Um, Nimisha, uh, you know, need to have, I like the sound of that. I think everybody has kind of understood that, accepted it. Uh, how does this mirror with global trends? I mean, is there a comparative you can possibly give us? Yeah. Um, so, uh, Sid, over the last four and a half months, uh, I said we've been tracking consumer sentiment in India closely. We've actually been doing the same across about 15 countries around the world. And these include uh, markets across uh, the Americas, Europe, and Asia. Um, uh, what's interesting is actually um, all, many of the things I talked about, uh, we are seeing across the world, not just in India. We're seeing right. a big, we're seeing a softening overall of demand. We're seeing pockets where consumers do want to buy, and we're seeing a huge desire for an end-to-end -end highly digitalized consumer journey. Uh, there's a lot more engagement that consumers have both pre-purchase and at the point of purchase. Um, in fact, if anything, cars have always been um, a, a category where, which is very high involvement. The entire right. family is involved, and it's 
you know, it's it's a very um, involved purchase. If anything, at this point, it's even more involved, but it's a lot more online. Um, people right. are also a lot more open to, you know, the virtual walkthroughs, the virtual configurations, um, things that they've not wanted to try in the past. And consumer okay. feedback uh, has actually been incredibly positive on that journey. All right. It's actually removed uh, multiple pain points. Um, uh, which, which is, which is the big learning coming out of all of this, for sure. Yeah, uh, Tarun, last word to you as we run out of time, as always. Very quickly, you do have a big one, the I-20 coming up. I, I won't ask you about the things that worry you because that's kind of obvious, but uh, the things that make you confident today from the learnings of the last five months, is that is that a good way to sum it up, that you are now confident of taking a big ticket launch like that forward? Uh, look, frankly speaking, you would have seen the, the July numbers. I think, uh, if at all, we can clearly see how strong the Indian auto industry is. We are back to almost uh, 97, 98% of last year level as far as July is concerned. Yes. Shows, and, and we have had huge learnings in the last four months. So I think we have, we can clearly see that, yes, uh, while it is challenging, we don't know what's going to happen to Corona, vaccine, blah, blah, blah. At the same time, we know that consumers in India are wanting to buy cars. Yes, I while I agree with Nimisha that there is a softening in demand, at the same time, I think Indian consumers really want to still spend money. They, consume, they still feel that car is a very, very important, you know, a part of their life. And, that's, and that is why we can see a very V-shaped recovery, which is happening. So I think right. India is different from the global economy, car penetration being where it is. So we can really look at it with a lot of optimism going forward. And I think it should be good. Yes. Things should be good. And I really wish that for all of you. Uh, I also thank you all for joining us. As always, yes, we are out of time now, but uh, very insightful to hear from all three of you. Uh, do wish the auto industry and indeed the three of you the best of luck in the days forward. Please stay safe. Uh, and that goes for all of you watching as well. Uh, it is, of course, continuing to be a difficult time for all of us. Stay safe. Please wear your seatbelts if you are on the road or your helmets if you're on a bike. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.